fairly normal looking Motorola Atrix 2 4G but um, this is a special Atrix 2 because it's also um, got Ubuntu installed on it running off the same Linux kernel as Android itself and I'm joined by Richard from Canonical, the guys behind Ubuntu who's going to um, tell us a little bit more because we, we had a lot of questions after you announced this a couple of days ago yeah. Ubuntu for Android and uh, we just thought it would be nice to, to come along and ask you a few more questions and so let's, um, let's rig this up Okay. so this is running gingerbread straight as it, as it was out of the box but with yeah. your code put in there too that's right so we, we haven't touched Android at all um, you know we've, we've gone very deep into the, um, the operating system um, we've configured the Linux, Linux kernel we've devised what we call a shared kernel architecture um, and that combined with the high performance and CPU architecture of this um, this particular smartphone means that um, our solution will allow it to boot the Ubuntu OS and, concur and run that concurrently at the same time as the Android OS. So Great. Well, um, both systems are very independent of each other. Um, at the moment, I'm on a, I'm on a, um, a browser. I can got the Engadget website up there. Um, I can also um, just flip across, and um, I've got the Financial Times website. Right. Um, I might be a business user using this on my way to work, and I'm just browsing websites. And yep. um, when I get into work. First get to your I desk. Do, get to my desk. Just dock it, and the dock is connected to a, a standard um, HDMI um, desktop display. Um, it, um, it fires up. Our screen has gone blank, and okay. now so just get rid of that. And the first thing that's happening is that the um, the Chromium browser that we've integrated within the desktop solution um, is giving you those websites that you were previously browsing in, on, on So this is, a, this is the Chromium browser now, it's not the browser we're just looking at. The Chromium browser opens up and goes to the last page that you are on, tries to be smart to, to just carry on a sort of seamless experience, but it is a different browser. It's a different browser, it's integrated to Android as you can see, because we've mm -hmm. got the same, the same web shape, um, websites being displayed. Um, but yeah, this is a desktop browser. It's the so. full Chromium desktop browser running full on Ubuntu desktop. That's okay. right, yeah. So, as you can see, um, it's got everything that you want from a desktop browsing experience. Um, we can close that down and I can just show you a few other things that um, would be relevant for this particular um, solution. So everyone will recognize this as being the standard Unity UI. So the first thing to say is that you know, we're not, um, we haven't adapted the OS system fundamentally any differently to the way in which the Ubuntu operating system works today. It's very well understood by um, more than 20 million people around the world, um, and this is the full um, Ubuntu OS that you can see running. So it's the Unity um, interface on the normal, it's the latest that's right, version yes. of Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Okay. Um, up here in the top right, you can see um, a few things that are specific to this solution. So the first thing is, um, you know, we've got access to our Wi-Fi networks. I can set up and configure different Wi-Fi networks um, according to where I am, where where I've docked, and those settings will um, configure the smartphone settings as well. So the smartphone is always remembering the networks that it was being I set see. up to connect to. In a desktop mode, you know, you're still going to want access to your telephony services, to your Android services, and they need to be integrated to allow you. So to what would happen if I if we received a call now, now that we're at our desk and we're plugged in and we we just shut down the browser? What would happen? Well, um, we've actually integrated a dialer capability here that it's um, we've got a quick launch from the icon. I see. So this is this is actually the Motorola stock application. So we've, we're just using this in conjunction with our own our own capability, just to just to demonstrate the um, the power of what um, the Ubuntu desktop system can, can can provide. But this is this is a full working dialer. So um, you can take and get any um, contact from your address book. Got you. If we had our headset calls. plugged into the handset, you know, our, our, with our mic and everything, we could be making calls at our desk. Exactly. from our phone um, in just the normal way. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're, everything within the Android system is working um, as, it, as it should be, so it, it's, it's picking up emails, it's, it's, it's registered to the mobile network, it will, it, will, it will display incoming calls and it will help and it will allow you to manage um, normal tele, um, text messages in exactly, the same, in exactly the same way, it's just you're using a different interface. Let's, can we try and tax the system a bit more? 
than just using, um, say, calling or whatever. Let's, can we lo load up multiple tabs or can we load up some video? And sure. where are the limits in terms of performance? So, well, the limits in terms of performance are specific to this particular prototype because you know we've we've integrated this to a level where we think that we've got a, a sufficient um, capability that's going to be interesting and compelling to handset manufacturers. Okay. Um, it's difficult and perhaps you know not not quite um, uh, the right thing to do in terms of try to test the system in terms of its performance because. The performance issues are going to be based on the handset manufacturer and what they would want to target in terms of performance um, and, and the way applications behave. And that, that's dependent on the chipset that they choose um, to um, to use. It's dependent on the type of applications that they might um, that, that they might choose to integrate and make. Well, listen. This is. I mean, there's a dual core processor here. It's mm -hmm. not particularly powerful, but we're expecting some really powerful phones. that MWC. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> but. So long as we, we get those more powerful phones, we could, and the, and the hardware manufacturers are happy to put this pre-installed, we're going to get the full benefits of quad-core, for example, of Tegra 3, yes. to, to run this. This, this can access um, threading and, and a multi-core setup to get, them, to get more performance. Yeah, but how much can we get from this particular okay. setup? So, let's just show you. I mean, first and foremost, this is running the full Ubuntu OS. I mean, that, that in itself is a quite impressive um, perform, performance element. Um, this is the standard dashboard that we use across the, um, the Ubuntu Unity UI. Um, you can see access to quick applications here. Um, so if we went into, um, into video, for example. So let me just show you how quickly it is. So I can undock. Mm -hmm. I can just go into the, um, to the home screen. Um, just select the camcorder. And then just take a quick quick video shot of the office here. Yep. Just pan that just so you can just see a bit of movement. Um, close that down. Let's go back to the home screen. You can dot that. Just wait a few seconds for it to fire up again. And now you can see that video loaded straight away in terms of the video lens user interface. We can fire that up. Whoops, sorry about that. So this is this is a you know, a reason a, a pretty good demonstration in terms of the power of, of what, yeah. what, what, what's going on here. So that's that's something that would work very well for um, you know sharing videos with. Um, what about if we go and load up a few photos and maybe can we have multiple windows open? Can we have photos open and then open videos and open the browser? You're obviously going to be you know testing it to some extent, but I mean that's something that. Um, we can show you, so at the moment here, this is the, the integrated um, photo gallery. These are um, photos available from the Android phone itself. So we can just open a photo like that. You've got the ability to um, edit that um, save and, and then save it back to the Android application itself. So if you wanted to use a more powerful... Do you have any photo edit editor up on there? or um, you've, got, um, you've got an adjustment thing down there for your... For shot well. So yeah, I mean we can change the exposure. So that can go up. Yeah, that can go down. So this is yeah, yeah, just, this, this it, is working in exactly the same way and the same kind of performance that a, a standard OS would work on your on, on your PC, for example. So you can see it's responding very, very well. It is it does seem smooth. And if we open up the browser, can we open up multiple tabs if we go to Engadget? I just I, I'm surprised by this. I just now clearly the the phone is is allowing it's giving up its resources to your software, and in the process of doing that, it seems to actually give, be giving you a lot of power to work with. Yes. But while all of the the, the the core functions of the phone carry on in the background. Yes. I mean, eff effectively, the, the the power is being transferred to everything that you would want to use within the um, the Ubuntu system. Um, simply because the use case is the phone, the phone's docked, so it's quite natural to assume that because this is the main interface that's being that's the focus of attention, the applications are going to be run in, in, in this interface. So there's a there's a very convenient way in which you know the um, the load balancing works, if you like, in terms it's, of the, um, the phone itself. Should we open a few? Um, uh, let's go to Engadget's main desktop um, site. 
uh, sorry, if you um, scroll down to the bottom, it should be um, an option to flip to, video, to the desktop mode. Uh, there it is. And let's switch to that and see what happens. Oh, I keep losing focus sometimes. It's and let's um, scroll down and see how that page renders. Keep going. It's just uh, it's a little. There's a little bit of hanging there, isn't there? I just wanted to see this thing at its limits, you know. Sure. Um, and 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 I fully bear in mind what you say about future processes, not only just future processes bringing more performance, but also better integration at the hardware level. Yeah, I mean that, bringing that's more vital. performance. Yeah. So I mean, with ev the the idea is, as we as as we've we've been saying, is that we want to um, demonstrate this directly with handset manufacturers and work with handset manufacturers who want to incorporate this within their own. Um, their, their own hard, hardware product plan. So and you're not going to make this option available for those who want to tweak and are ready to experiment. Just you know, put it out there for them to play with it and maybe give you feedback. Well, at some at, at, at some um, at some time, it will it will be available for for people to um, to you know to, to, to work to install work themselves in some way. It won't. The, the, the problem with installing it itself is that um, the solution is designed for target hardware. So. Um, on, on that basis, you know, we're working with um, handset manufacturers that are, that are going to go through all the relevant optimization and all the relevant development um, and, and quality assurance testing that's going to make it just, you know, absolutely run perfectly. And I don't think you can expect, you know, a sort of home user to be able to kind of um, achieve the same level of, level of results. And how long do you think it's going to take to get this? I mean, how far progressed are you in terms of your talks with? Manufacturers, and you, you can't tell us any right now. Or there aren't any to announce at this stage. We've got M MWC next week. Um, we're talking to a lot of manufacturers um, throughout the week in Barcelona. The the beauty, or one one particular um, uh, it, uh, for a positive element about this solution is that it is designed to run concurrently with Android. So it means that a handset manufacturer can take it as it is and effectively run it within within the hardware without them having to backtrack or regress any of the current product plans they might have in place for their um, their multi-core um, smartphones that are already probably in, in, in production to some extent and probably being planned for launching at the end of this year. So that means that we can talk to handset manufacturers that have plans to launch uh, multi-core devices this year and they can take the solution and they can still um, implement it and productize it to coincide with those launch plans this year. And no one's given you a Taker 3 handset to play with, I just, I, I can't resist asking that. Taker 3 is an, amazing, is an amazing chipset. Um, but, but, we, we, but to try this out on, you haven't tried this out on anything more powerful than just the Motorola We feel we, we feel that the Motorola has been the right target hardware for us to prototype on. We've done that independently of any work with Motorola and independent of any work with, with TI. Um, that was just the, um, the relevant choice for us to get to this stage. Um, as, we, as we start to expand our efforts, then absolutely the Tegra chipset is something we, we want to work on as well. Cheers, Richard. Thank you.